I won six, and uh, it's been a minute since I tapped in with you guys about the Chevelle. If you've ever restored a classic car, you know there are a lot of ups and downs and restoration process, and just dealing with various mechanics, various shops. And uh, if you can find one shop that will do pretty much all the work, maybe outside of the interior or the paint, you're winning. Well, I wasn't able to find that, and so my car went to a bunch of different shops, and it's been at this current shop almost three years, and it's close to being done, so I want to give you guys an update. Um, man, it's been rough, been very emotional. For people who are car people, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a car guy or a car girl, you might think like, oh man, it's just a car, but classic cars are different when it comes to being involved in restoring them. And they're just a piece of you, you know, it's a journey. So the Chevelle, I've had this car for over a decade. My wife and I drove to Vegas to get married in this car. Um, at one point I was frustrated with the car and I was gonna sell it. Um, two times I was gonna sell the car just because I was just over it. And then I broke the car all the way down again. And this is actually the second restoration of the car. So um, yeah, I, I'm fingers crossed. I will have my car by my birthday in May. It's supposed to be done by January, but you know how that goes. And I still have to go back to the paint guy who touched up the paint to have them clean up a few things, but I just wanted to get the car home. Dealing with a car out of state is hard enough. And so, um, you know, I'm back and forth trying to monitor progress. And then I have the Cougar, which is in another shop out here in California that's in paint that I'm trying to get home. And then I have the Porsche, which should be back on the road hopefully by next week. So. Yeah, man, um, cars are my passion. I don't do drugs, I don't drink. Um, I'm not into you know, going to strip clubs and stuff like that. Um, cars are my passion, so. Underneath here. So look, let's come around and look this way. So, what we got going on here. This here is two uh, dash aids, but both the, the top of the tank is wide from both your pumps into a dash 10 out to a dash eight comes into this dash eight which is half inch all the way up through all hard lines through the fuel filter into your fuel filter up out into a y a dash eight y that's a dash eight in to two dash sixes now what happens with the two dash sixes is slow the car what's this going into the exhaust What's that? Oh, that's just the end. That's just the end of the oh, line. Okay. We're just uh, that cable from the front to back. We're okay. Just We're just, so it wasn't hanging down. <coughs> Mind you, remember this too underneath here. How this is all boxed in. We boxed all this in now. Your brake lines, all hard, mounted all the way through with a proportioning valve. The proportion valve on heart line, but this is not all boxed into with that kit. Oh, used. that kit, okay. Yeah. Did you ever figure out the drive shaft stuff? Yeah, no, we just have some, like I said, I want to get it on the ground. Get oh, it okay. Out in the alley and I'd take a so measurement. The, oh. Okay, the only, uh, If we hit all the fuel lines on the motor, uh -huh. you don't see any fuel lines. Oh, you don't see them? Mm -mm. Very little. You can tell from the height of the brother underneath the. So now that wire comes up. Okay, right down there. 
and then there's two dash sixes and one comes here feeds this fuel rail one goes over there feeds that fuel rail so you're feeding both fuel rails with two dash sixes and then you return out of the fuel rails in the front underneath here as you can see underneath here it returns back to the regulator okay okay and then the regulator returns back down to this dash six return line and then you have something that reads what it, if it's either e85 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So on the return side, I think we're okay putting it on the return side. I've never worked with one of these sensors, uh -huh. but fuel is fuel, so it's going to sense it yeah. either way. So this fitting here and this fitting here is uh, uh, where to wait for. And then something plugged in here? Yeah, the, the harness. Uh -huh. That's how this is a sensor to tell if it's a uh, flash shield. I'm going to have Andrew probably make a little shield for it. You know, uh, I mean, this is out of the heat. Uh, it's protected from the bottom? Pr protected. I mean, this is protected here, but we can come and make a little chain airs for it if we have to, but I don't think there's going to be a problem. You know, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, all you see all AM fittings. So what do you th what all you think is like what all's all left all now? Is, we're just wiring. We're just wiring. Wiring, exhaust system, drive shaft. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah we're gonna start wiring. Are you tired of smelling funky? Have you washed your ass? Go to bigkirknow16.com. and get to Nutsack Run.